Today I thought we'd take a look at how you make a bowl gouge cut correctly, how you direct it to create the shapes you want to create and to leave a smooth cut in its wake. This is a Henry Taylor Super Flute bowl gouge. Uh, been around since 1976. And here you have a spindle gouge. We can't use a spindle gouge for faceplate work. In faceplate work, we have the grain running across the piece like this. That's the center of the tree. These are the annular rings right here. And if we were to cut with this gouge in the way we normally cut like this, it would catch right in this area and rip the grain actually right out of the piece and maybe rip the tool out of your hand or break the handle or rip the piece off the faceplate, maybe all of the above, who knows. So you really can't use this in the way that you would with a spindle and you have to go to a bowl gouge. Here is the bowl gouge we just described. You notice that it does have quite a different flute. This has a very shallow flute, the spindle gouge, that is a radius of a circle. And the bowl gouge has a deep, either U-shaped or parabolic-shaped flute uh, with a very different grind on the nose. We explained grinds in last month's Zoom session. So this month we're going to look at how we make this cut in the way we want to. So to turn the outside of a bowl here, we would turn our lathe on and we present this gouge level on the rest. That is, the whole gouge is parallel to the floor. And we're going to touch down like that and get it cutting. We've got the flute in the start of a, any bowl gouge cut pointing to about 930 to the left or if you were to the right it would be about uh, oh, 230 and we get it going like this and now we just turn that until it comes sweet and now simply pushing on the handle along the shaft will make it scoot along on the nose bevel and go in the direction we want it to cut. We, we change directions with the bowl gouge. If we want to cut deeper, we need to swing it towards you. And now it's cutting a deeper cut. And if we wanted to cut shallower, we'd rock up like this and come around and continue right up this wall. And again, if everything's right, you only need downward pressure on this, on the rest. All the control is in this hand. So the start is 930 or 230, and the scrape cut, once it gets going, twisting the gouge clockwise on an outside cut or counterclockwise on an inside cut makes it come sweet. Do not try to pull it with your left hand. The control is in the right hand. A good technique is to simply put two fingers on the gouge like this and now push with your right hand and it will cut just as nice as pie. And to flare this rim, we would just move the handle to the right and we could flare it out and create a revere shape. To cut the, really the bottom curve through the S curve of most bowls, you start way over here like this. to come right around like this, bringing the handle towards you. And I'll go right up the wall. I've now turned this bowl around. 
on the chuck by scraping a recess in the base and using an expansion hold. And we're going to now hollow it out. And it is easier to do the hollowing because you've got to start here for a hollowing cut and come all the way around like this. And an uneven surface will make it more difficult to start. So a good first step is simply to take a bowl gouge like this and just cut right across here and create a level surface. There. I'm going to break that edge because it can cut you. And I'm going to start here pointing that nose bevel the direction I want to cut. Oops, got away from me. Scrape cut until I get in there a ways. And I turn this counterclockwise as I come around. There we go. I'm scraping in. I now have a ledge for this to register on. I'll turn it a little like that until it becomes sweet. And now I'm swinging the handle around to me to come across the bottom and I have to continue to turn it counterclockwise as I come over down to a very small piece. And I'm always on the center line throughout this cut. I've now hollowed out to I have a pretty even wall thickness. I'm still a bit thick in the base. I probably could go down in here and take another cut or two down in here. So we'll now start working this like a quarry wall. We're going to down like that. A ways and feel how our wall is. It's growing thicker as we go down. So we're going to come to final fault wall thickness now. good. I'll now take this down a little further, like that. This gouge needs sharpening. That's why it's slipping. All right, I've sharpened that bowl gouge, and you'll see that it starts much better now. Cuts much better, cuts quieter. Getting a long ways from my rest, so Swinging that in like that would help a little bit. Nice even wall thickness. Take some more out of here. Very even. Sticking in. We're going to come to about here. Very nice. And you see we have a pretty darn good surface finish and look at the difference between the surface finish here and after I sharpened the gouge right in the rest of the way in there.
need to straighten out that bottom just a little bit here. You notice I'm twisting that anti-clockwise as I go across there. So that's the trick to uh, using the bowl gouge and directing it. Just remember that quality of the cut is by turning it and direction of the cut is by swinging it and that you're always rubbing that bevel right behind the tip on the cut and pushing along the axis of the tool is what drives it. If you try to move it with your left hand, which is a natural thing to do, you will not get a smooth cut. You will not get something you're proud of. So a well-presented gouge used properly will just give you terrific results. And as you can see, I've done this in real time and pretty darn fast. So uh, give it a try. Give some of these te techniques a try. The big thing is look at our previous month's video on how to sharpen these gouges correctly and uh, get that under your belt so that you start out with a properly sharpened gouge. Next month I think we'll take a look at spindle gouges and roughing out gouges and how we can do some spindle turning and get similar results to this of taking plenty of material off fast when we need to but getting terrific results when we need fine detail. Thanks for visiting me today and don't forget to take a look at our other videos on the YouTube channel and uh, take a look at our website. We will be offering courses again starting probably in July of this year. Come take a course with me and don't forget to take a look at my book, the third edition of the lathe book which came out uh, this time last year and is the third edition and is available on our website for 21 bucks post paid to your door thanks for visiting i'll see you next month